What's it been like working with that mortgage firm? Has it been doing okay? I think it's been okay. What about your listings? Are you getting more, do you feel like listing activity is picking up? I feel like it is picking up. I've got... What are you doing to prospect right now that you feel is working? Like anything unique or anything new that you're well, working on? I joined the women's club about a year ago. What would you tell a real estate agent that if you went back and had to start your career over, like what are some of the things you're going to tell this new agent that you would have done different? Learn the contract. What What's been going on with your business? How's everything else? Oh, it's going good. It's going pretty good. My um, R1 is under contract, and we're the one you were trying to help me with. They end up staying with their Wilson because oh, they, they were they were set with it. And I'm like, well, at least you talk to them, you know. Yep. Um, I just takes you that commercial. Oh, Shell, cool. Shell Thank you. Over at Capstar. She's really good. Awesome. I appreciate that. Good, good. Um, but you got it closed? Hopefully we'll close on the 29th. What's it been like working, you know, with, with, with that mortgage firm? Has it been doing okay? I think it's been, it's been okay. We're supposed to have our appraisal back this week. So that'll tell you. So that'll tell <laughs> me. Right. So I haven't made it all the way, but we're, um, there's going to be like electrical engineer also. Okay. Our structural engineer. Yeah, because it's a modular. Ma yeah, yeah, manufactured, and I don't, I don't normally, you know, do those, but I've been trying to help this couple for a long time, and they were wanting land too, and you know, with the budget, there's just, yeah. you know, there's only so much you can do. Those buyers are going to go away fast with the market picking up. Right. They're not going to have an opportunity. Like I've been telling exactly. my clients and my friends and my family, like I'm like, if you don't buy a house and you need down payment, et cetera, closing costs in the next couple of months is your opportunity. If not, it could be less than that. Right. Um, what about your listings? Are you getting more, do you feel like listing activity is picking up? I feel like it is picking up. I've got quite a few on the horizon. Um, commercial also listing. So I know that my commercial property, she wants to sell it, but she's not quite ready to put it on the market. But if she got the right number, she'd sell it. Yeah. So, and I have another person that I thought might work for that because that's what you know i i do i'm matchmaking yeah, you know all yeah. day long and thinking of well how can i help this buyer or help this seller and match them together and it's worked out sometimes yeah. you know um a lot of times it doesn't but i i just keep on trying so i'm like well i've got a, a guy that needs to he's wanting to buy some commercial property to buy, build a shop and then i had called him and he's looking up to five million to spend up to five million so I called him, like excited, thinking this might be good. It's not on the market. You don't know about it yet. And he was he was glad. He was like, well, I'm really glad you brought me, some, you know, an option that's not on the market, but that's not big enough. It was 0. 0.7 yeah. of an acre. And I'm like, well, how much land are you needing exactly? Well, I'm unsure of that. I don't really know, right? So I'm like, okay, well, I've got this one, nine acres. Oh, I've seen that one already. And I'm like, okay, okay. Do you have to have a separate license for commercial? You don't. You don't? You don't. Really? Right. It's I've, just a longer cycle. More work goes into it. But can you make the same amount of money, like 3 and 6% and all that? You can, yes. Oh, good. Yeah. It, it is longer. It's harder to get in. Um, normally, with commercial real estate, it's, it's, it's a little harder to get in um, as far as other realtors and... It's, I don't know, it's different getting into It's like into us that. with jumbo loans. You know, you get into jumbo loans, there's more work, takes longer sometimes. Right. And you're competing with the banks, but you can make a lot more, you can make a lot of money on it, just like a residential loan, same percentages, but it's just a different ballpark, you right. know. A lot of people, like, when they buy a jumbo property, like when I built my property, like we already have our relationships with our private bankers. Right. So that's the first people we go to because they understand our finances, but... Um, we've gotten pretty aggressive around Jumbo. We got some a lot of in-house products that help out Jumbo and self-employed people. But I really, really think like these next 90 days are going to set us up for a massive year. Like as long as like I don't pay attention to like politics a lot, the geopolitical stuff going around right. around the world is the wild card. We get yeah. another war that could change stuff. But I was just talking to my buddy. And I was like, you know what? Like, I really think that if we went through COVID mm -hmm. and people still bought houses. Oh, yeah. Then I, I hate to say this, but I don't really think they're paying attention to wars. I don't think I think Americans are so 
tunnel vision. Right. What they pay attention to is the, like interest rates and what everybody else is doing. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And I think that lag effect's going to really kick people in the butt. You know, I have a agent who um, got an offer on a property for one of our clients that's buying right. last weekend. I called her on Monday. I said, did the house go under contract? She goes, actually, we did. Somebody came back to us from two weeks ago and said, okay, now we'll give you the full price. And she goes, I told them. I said, we're not going to accept that. We have uh, five people coming to schedule showings. My sellers want to look and see how these, how these showings go this week. So I think in the next probably 30 days, we're going to see multiple offers again, wave and appraisal, super uber competitive because – it's already kind of competitive. It is. You know? It, it really is. And I feel like the only reason we got that one property for my buyers under 400 looking for five acres and the whole bit, you know, um, is because it had went off the market a couple times, had been under contract, fell out. And then, you know, everybody's like, so what's wrong with that property? It's yeah. fallen out of contract a few times, you know, a couple times. And I, so if it wasn't for that, we wouldn't have been able to get that property either because it would have been swooped up over ask. I heard uh, a stat the other day that in the Q4, 63% of all transactions fell apart over, appra- uh, over inspection or appraisal. Whoa. There was massive, massive fallout over inspection in the Q4. And I put a post up on Facebook that got like 200 comments from agents and it was... um. A lot of really good thoughts. Majority of the three thoughts were buyers are um, super edgy, fearful, and there's a lot of things that just cause them to back out over a little bit, right? Right. Number two, inexperienced agents that don't know how to negotiate repairs and communicate in an effective manner. And then the third thing is, you know, deferred maintenance on some properties are really super bad because yeah. people don't have cash to say, I'm going to em- clean my gutters. I'm going to get the landscaping. They're not keeping up with that stuff. Right. You know? So I've been writing down some things and I had a few ideas for you today, Good. but if agents want to generate buyers and they want to generate listing opportunities, I think the first thing we have to do is go back to what did we learn from two years ago? Right? Right. So what I mean by that is as an agent or a mortgage lender, a lot of people are like, I want to wait until later in the year. I can right. make more money. Rates are going to drop, whatever. Right. Okay. I'm not going to push against that and tell, well, now's the time to buy, like a lot of people do. Yes. What I'm going to do is I'm going to serve that client and try to give them what they want, which is, okay, that's cool if you're going to wait till June or July. But I think the opportunity is, why don't we use these next six months to prep you for a mortgage, get you a better rate, make sure you have cash to close, you know, expectations correctly, price points, yes. all that. As an agent, I think one, there's, there's two main things that agents can do right now to get a foot in the door with somebody early and often, even if they're going to buy later in the year. But once you talk to them, they move the timeline up sometimes. Yes. But one is saying, okay, why don't I come out for a right price analysis? I call it a right price analysis. Uh-huh. That, if I was an agent, that's what I would call it. I would yeah. not call it a comparable or a, a, a listing appointment. I'd call it a right price analysis. Why don't I come out for a discovery meeting and a right price analysis? And what I'll do is I'll give you a game plan for the next six months that'll help you get maximum dollar for your house when the time comes. Yes. And I would talk about things like deferred maintenance and I would beat the property up. I'd be mm-hmm. like, look, you know, the siding is green. This is going to cost you $30,000. You need yep. to be working on this. Um, or you could probably list the house now, sell it, and not have to do any of that. But the, the other opportunity to keep your foot in the door, even if people say they don't want to buy or sell right now, is p- existing properties. These people are in for a rude awakening when their escrow adjustments happen due to insurance premium increases. So right. I sent out that realtor value bomb, realtor roadmap on Sunday mornings. I sent out that email. I don't know if you get that, but it was talking about the opportunity for agents right now is to call your past clients right. and say, hey, as your professional realtor, I don't want something to catch you off guard. And you know, one thing that's in your mortgage payment is your taxes and insurance. Right. Insurance on average is up by 34% the premiums. So what's going to happen is on best case scenario... Here in the next couple of months, they're going to be told, best case, hey, your mortgage payment is going up 100 bucks a month. Worst case scenario, they're not going to, and that escrow is going to uh, have a deficiency, go all year long. And at the end of the year, then they're going to say, not only did your insurance go up 100 a month, we're short 2400 on your premium. So your payment's going to go up another 200 Now you got a $300 increase in your mortgage right. payment. And that's substantial for a lot of, you know, a lot of people. So as an agent, you could 
call your client to say, as your professional realtor, right. I wanted to make you aware of something that's coming up and a lot of people are going to get hit with, and I don't want my clients to be surprised. Um, have you recently been notified that your insurance premium is going up on your home? Well, I don't know. I haven't checked. It's included in my mortgage. Okay, well, I would highly advise that tomorrow you call your insurance agent mm -hmm. and say, did my insurance premium go up from last year? If they say yes, then you need to make sure to provide that updated premium or ask the insurance company to do it right. to your mortgage company ASAP. Yes. Because if they don't do it ASAP, it's going to create a deficiency every month. And guess who's going to have to pay for that? They'll do it either lump sum and tell you you need to write a check or they'll divide it by 12 and that's how much they're going to increase your mortgage payment. Right. And it's also a great opportunity for you right now to partner with some insurance agents and right. say, hey, I'm going to be calling my clients. You know, can I send these clients over to you if they want to shop their insurance? Right. You know? Yeah, that's a, it's a good idea. And I, I had heard insurance had been going up, especially in like Florida, where it's even where some people aren't even it's not insurable. Oh, yeah. I mean, Huge. have you ever... Well, people are getting dropped. Then you had periods where it went to, um, like, State Farm froze. This is hearsay. But what I had heard right. was that State Farm, like, at one point in the fall, wasn't even taking on new homeowners insurance premiums. They were like, we're levelizing right now. and all The losses with the insurance companies over the last two years has been massive. So they're going to try to make that money up somewhere. Somewhere. Think about how many people are texting and driving. Oh, almost everybody. I mean, I have, an, know. I have an antique pickup truck. I was driving into work one day. A guy was texting and driving, pulled out. This is about three months ago. Pulled out right in front of me. No. Caused like $4,000 in damage because he was texting and driving. He was also disabled, had a hearing disability. Oh, I can't goodness. imagine what his insurance premium was. Oh, no. But that's happening over and over and over right. and over. right. The roads, the deferred maintenance on the roads. I mean, how many people are claiming insurance when they blow out a wheel uh -huh. on 440? And then how, how many are, I don't know, I had heard it was very few that like the county or the state, you know, was paying, you know. Very few. Very but few. You have to be able to prove it. <laughs> you know, on Franklin Road coming down near Brentwood, right on the main strip right there, coming down Franklin Road near like Nordstrom Rack and all that. Mm -hmm. Um I had, this was a couple of years ago, but I had a BMW and I had, you know, big black wheels on it with little thin tires. And no, I was in, yeah, and I was in that car and I hit a pothole in front of the Brentwood Country Club, blew out the tire. Immediately the sensor goes off. I had run flats and I was like, crap. Um, I didn't bend a wheel. Amanda, I went and put a new tire on that thing. It cost me like $500. I shit you not. Two weeks later, I hit the same exact <laughs> fucking thing and blew, the pot, blew that wheel out again. I just about shit myself. Right. I, w I was so taken back. I wasn't even mad. I was like, you got to be kidding me. Right. Like same exact damn pot. And I wanted to call Brentwood and be like, this is ridiculous. But I was like, they ain't going to do nothing. No. Especially if they're not going to feel bad if it's a BMW. Yeah, you know? like so sorry for you. The other opportunity was um, I was talking is I was talking to an agent this morning. And I said, you get like every one of your clients refers you to your next deal. I said, how in the heck are you getting a client from every client like this? And he goes, well, number one, I make sure to like every Thursday I call every one of my clients, give them a rundown of where the transaction's at, whether it's a list or a buy. Right. And he goes, but honestly, I'm also getting referrals from some of my um, professional providers like insurance and title and stuff. And I said, well, tell me more about that. And he goes, well, one thing I realized is one time I called to update the title company on a deal and I said, hey, you know, this is what's going on with it. They're prepared, you know, for closing next Friday. Do you guys have everything you need? And the title lady said, Kyle, I just want to tell you, you're the only real estate agent that has ever called us to give us an update on your transaction. Most of the time, the title company doesn't hear until it's like last minute, move closing date <laughs> right. up or whatever, or the mortgage company tells them. And I said, so you call every Thursday? You also call the title company? He goes, absolutely. And he goes, two of my buyers last year came from in that title company. He goes, they've also referred me family members. Wow. And I was like, wow. So that's how you can get referrals from your title companies, your professional vendors. Now he said he's calling the insurance company. Right. So he's like, if it's a local insurance company, he goes, I'll call them every Thursday. Just wanted to give you an update. We're still planning on closing next Friday. Do you have everything you need? Hey, by the way, does you know any other realtor call you to update? That's no. A good idea, because I, I mean, I do with the title, but insurance that's taking it one, you know, one step further yeah. that I've, you know, I've never personally, you know, have done. So that's a good tip. What are you doing to prospect right now that you feel is working? Like anything unique or anything new that you're well, working on? I joined the women's club. 
oh. about a year ago. November was a year. And that has been really good. I'm actually building my real estate team. I've got somebody coming on. Nice. To work with me. She's getting her license this month. Nice. So you'll have to meet her. Okay. I'll have to introduce you to her. Her yeah. name's Michelle. She's a firecracker, too. So I think she's going to be really she good. She live out near you? She's in Murfreesboro, yeah. Okay. And nice. um, she knows a lot of people. She's got a lot of great connections and strong relationships already. Yeah. That... Because that's how I built. That's how I've built my whole business. I've not bought one lead. Cause yeah. That's just the kind of gal I am. I'm like a DIY. You know, if I can't do it, then it can't be done. And lead sucks. <laughs> it's just a different beast. It's a completely different clientele. Right. And and that's not my vibe. You know. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, I just gotta go about it the old fashioned way. I mean, I would businesses. never go. It just, I, I don't, it's just, de- people are different, you they know, but different. I would never go on the internet and fill out like a search and just be la- in, and land with a stranger. You know, I, I won't even go onto a website like, and like, if I see a car that I like, I will not talk to that dealer. I'll call my guy and I'll right. ask him to go call them. And I'm just like, we got to educate the public that like, when you just fill something online, you literally are playing Russian roulette. Yeah, that's a good video because that's another way I get my leads is is the content creating, yeah. you know, and being on social media because I was really against that years ago because I'm a private person, really, you know. And um, Was that your mom in some of your videos the other my day? My mom has been in one of yeah, my videos. I saw it. And then Tammy is my assistant, and she I've been putting her in some of them too because I'm like, you want to be in some, Tammy? And I could use another purse. She's like, yeah, let's do it. So I'm like, let's I do love it. watching, especially your TikToks. I love those. Um, I wanted to show you somebody okay, cool. that is having some really, really good success. And I'm sure Tony wouldn't mind you following him and using some of this. But Yeah. So look at Tony. Oh, you know, let me see. I think, was he at one of your... Yeah, he was at one of my events. Okay, look see. at, he really ran with it. Look oh at his views. God. Million, 2.1, 1.1. 1. 1. So it, Tony. he's hacked it because what he's doing is he's found, you know, the, the algorithm picks up all these words on the screen. Right. The other thing he does is he types it again and he drags it off to the he side. He taught me that the last time we, or our Zoom. And look how yes. simple his videos are. Now his assistant just films that. Oh, man, and it's just, I love it. And so I've started doing it and I'm getting a little traction, not like Tony, but somehow, I think it also has to do with the fact that he is using the right hashtags and the right sounds. Yes. You it's know? All, it's like all of it. I'm going to write his name down because yeah. I do want to follow yeah, him. Yeah, Tony Carlotello. Good. Good. He's, and he runs, I mean, he's like a $50 million business, I yeah, think. You know? Oh, shoot. I'm he runs a great. From Tony. One, two, three, four. He's got five videos right in the top 10 that are over a million. That's insane. He said in what he's done is he's added schedule a meeting. Do you have a, what's your link in your bio do? Um, it is, is like goes to my website. Okay. What okay. I would do, I would change it. Change it. Okay. And here's why, because okay. it works. It works for him. It works for me. I, I'll I'm tell you a story it. in a minute, but okay. go ahead and somehow have a link where they can like schedule a 50 minute phone call. Okay. Now, if you don't have Calendly or a way to schedule a 50 minute phone call, that link could just take you to a quick little small little questionnaire landing page and be like, Hey, give me your name, first name and phone right. number. Right. Okay. And you know, I'll call, I'll, I'll text you to schedule time or I'll call you whatever. And like in a lot of your videos or in your caption, you can put, by the way, if you would like to schedule a 15 minute discovery call, click the link in my bio. He's had multiple people do it. I started working on it really, really hard two months ago because an influencer asked me, he goes, okay, well, your page is pretty good and all that. And my feelings were kind of hurt because he said, what is your page doing for you? I said, what do you mean? He's like, can you tell me how many dollars in revenue you have made from your Instagram page? I said, well, no, I don't. He's like, so you, why are you posting? And I was like, wait a minute. (laughs) He's right. He goes, you're your post need to lead to your link in your bio and your bio needs to do something for you. So I made it where you can subs- come to my content creator university yes, where you can that. schedule a call. Uh, about a month ago when I started doing this, I changed this maybe about two months ago, actually about a month ago, I'm standing in my bathroom, getting ready, look down. I got an eight thirty phone call, 15 minute phone call. I open it. The phone number that they had put in there was 011. I'm like, out of country. I was like, ah, delete. Mm-hmm. Spam, right? right? Some spam bot or somebody trying to get on my calendar. 
couple of minutes later, I get a pop-up. It shows up in my calendar at 8.45 again. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. what in the hell? So I hit delete. Like five minutes later at like 8.50, I get a DM that pops up. And the DM pops up and it says, hey, this is so-and-so and so-and-so. I'm very sorry. Um, we should have sent you a DM first. We're the ones trying to schedule an appointment. We live out of the country six months of the year, and we live in Fresco, Texas the other six months of the year. I'm like, okay, I'm, maybe this is legit, maybe not. <laughs> right. And I said, I'm so sorry. I said, I, I, you, you've exposed a, a loophole in my process that I needed to, you know, I never thought about that. Right. And see, I mean, I get spams all day long. I know it. And so uh, I'm still kind of suspect, and I'm like, you know what? I said, are you available to talk at 9 o'clock? And they said, yeah. And I said, do you have an American number, like a, a United States number I can call? They said, yeah, here you go. So I called them at 9 o'clock, and I'm trying to ask all the right questions. They're really like, where do you live? You know, how many kids? What's your goals? You know, and they're answering every question right. It's a husband and wife. She said, you know, we live six months in Portugal, and we live six months in Frisco, Texas. And we have a real estate portfolio, and we want to grow it. And we've followed you for about a year. And we feel really comfortable with you because we've talked to a lot of mortgage lenders and they just haven't dealt with investors or a lot of volume. And we've watched your stuff and we feel like we know you. Right. And I was like, oh, well, I'm super, super honored. Mm -hmm. So then I'm like, well, I need to get them on a Zoom call, see if they're real people. I said, well, why don't we do a discovery Zoom call? We'll talk about your goals, your plans and all of that. Amanda, the next day I scheduled that Zoom call, they showed up, they're sitting there with their kids. And I said, tell me about your goals. They're like, well, we have some investment properties. We have an investment property portfolio. My dad died a little over two years ago, and he left it to me. And I was like, oh, well, how many properties do you all own? She's like, well, you know, it's a lot. And I was like, well, what's a lot? And she goes, well, it's valued a little over $24 million right now. It's a good, uh, that's... I was like, holy crap. <laughs> so I went over to tax records and pulled it up. Right. I like pulled up the state and pulled up their name. Sure enough, whew, I looked. I said... Do you have loans? I already knew because I looked at loan amounts. I said, "Do you already do you have loans on these?" And they're like, "Well, they're about eight. It's about eighty percent free and clear." I'm like, "Holy crap!" So then I'm just I, I dove right in both feet and I said, "So what are your goals?" They're like, "We want to quadruple it." I said, "By when?" They're like, "We don't really know." And so I did some quick math and I started just like going at it. I was like, "Well, if you wanted to quadruple it to a hundred million in five right. years, sixty months." Divide that by 60 months. You need to buy $1.2 million per month for the next five years. They're like, oh. I said, in Nashville, Tennessee area, that's probably about two properties, maybe three per month. Yeah, easy to do. And I said, now, where are you going to do down payments? They're like, well, we'd like to refinance some of the other properties and take cash out. Okay. So I've gone through the beginning of the process, and now we have five cash out refis. I said, let's get all your money ready. Right. And then get you plugged in. They want to buy in Knoxville. Yeah. I was like, do you have an agent out there? Like, yes, we have an agent. And I was like, so let's get your loan and your money already and pre-approved yes. all off an Instagram that's click awesome. link. That so that's why wonderful. now in the bottom of my videos or captions, a lot of the times I'm my call to action. Call to action. Yeah. I Subscribe to my newsletter. Come yeah. to my content creator. Or if you need a 15 minute phone call and I, I'd switch it up. Right. Right. I do it. need to uh, kind of suggest something you but know. do it from a place where you're not selling yes where it's like like my emails i'll say hey i put out a weekly email with finance tips tricks hacks if that's something you would like click the link in my bio or if i'm like hey i uh my coach taught me this he's like um i have carved out five spots a week that people can just have 15 minutes on the phone with me if that's something you think would be helpful click the link in the bio yes instead of like oh i want to sell you a house Right? Click my link. Yeah. Right. Like, right. hey, I've set aside five spots a week. Yeah. If you'd like, you know, to pick my brain for 15 minutes, please click the link in my bio. I'll be happy to answer any and all questions you've got whatsoever with no high pressure sales. Right. You know, yeah. you'll start getting those appointments. Yeah. I'm going to do it. Is TikTok it. converting some business for you? It is. It is. I've, I've gotten quite a few referrals from other agents too. Really? Off of TikTok. Because they watch you in another market or something mm -hmm. like that. In Texas, all over. Yeah. So... Maybe some of your videos are in your captions too. You need to put, I love when I'm able to have, uh, I love it when people refer me a deal here in Tennessee. I try to reciprocate. Yes. And just right. vo voicing it more and more. Right. You know, because a lot of people like, for example, I want to hire 10 loan officers this year. Yes. Well, my coach told me, he goes, how many times are you saying that on a weekly basis? I was like, well, I don't know what you mean. He's like, well, are you putting it in your emails? Are you putting it in your videos? I was like, no, but I'll start. He goes, you do your weekly email that goes out to all your agents, right? And I said, yeah. And he goes, start putting a PS. 
I want to personally mentor 10 agents mm-hmm. this year or t- 10 loan officers this year. Who's a good loan officer you know? Right. Well, I've gotten three referrals just this week from agents. I said, this is a good guy. He's at a crappy company. Right. You should call him. And, and it makes sense because if they don't, no one knows about what you're looking for or what I'm looking for or what I'm doing or what you're doing, then no one knows. If I go home, you know? I found if I go home and I don't give some hints and clues and say to my wife, I want to get busy tonight, like I typically find <laughs> that she's not a mind reader. Right. And she'll be like, oh, I didn't even know. Yeah. Right. Exactly. I just thought you didn't like me. Right. Right. <laughs> and it's like, it's funny in real estate, we all have goals and aspirations and people that we want to help or something new that we're trying to do. But then we don't go out there and we don't frame it and project it to everybody and let them know. Or we do it in a really, really super high salesy way, which is now's the time to list. Now's the time to buy. And that's what I love about your social is the fact that like you rarely are like buy a house now. You're making me laugh. You're giving me some knowledge and it's good stuff. Thank you. I appreciate that because I've really, it's like I said, I was against social media because I kind of seen it that way. Like, well, I'm just going to be like another one of the million agents saying the same thing, same market update. You know, I just, I wanted to be different by just being myself and say, you know, kind of doing what, what I like and what, what's fun for me. And I'm like, well, hopefully somebody else will think it's fun or, and maybe learn something here and there too. Do you do email marketing? At I all? don't. Just, you don't I send don't. out a blast or anything? I don't. You know, like mine's called the Realtor Roadmap, Tips and Tricks, you know. And then I do one on, on Money Mindset on Friday mornings goes to all my database. Right. And I'll tell you, like, I, I, I keep it super, super simple. Like yeah. Like five bullet points. Right. And here's what I do. I, I, I get Inman. I go to a couple of websites. I look at something. All I right. steal it. And I go to chat GPT. And I say bullet point it, format it for an email for my client database. It, and then I drop it in there and I email it out to them once a week. Right. But one of the things I've started doing is I've added the links to my most recent videos. Okay. So I'm like, hey, I just put a video out about veterans. If there's something, and they'll click it and it'll take them over to Instagram and it causes my views to go up. Yeah. So that way I'm reusing. Right. The other thing that I would recommend is if you have TikToks, like, you know, depending on how you want to format them, fun, you know, knowledge base, whatever, is you go in here and repurpose them. So I went into Canva, right? And I reused this graphic and put this text over it. Yes. And then you put your video there. Oh, cool! And so that carousel, that's called a carousel. Yeah. You can reuse your videos that you've filmed. Right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all these videos that I've been doing in here, and I'm going to go through and I'm going to find the ones that perform the best. You know, that got a lot of views. Right. And then I'm going to dump them into a carousel once or twice a week. Yes. That's going to be my Tuesday Thursdays. And in my other days, I'm going to do, you know, these videos, which just sucks. You are so ahead of me on that, though. Like, I, I'm like, okay, once a week on Instagram is what I do on Instagram. I know I know the gurus say two, three times a day. But I've, I have found with myself, I'm not trying to talk about anybody else, but with myself, I have found when I try to do two or three times a day, my quality starts slacking a little bit of, you know, it's not as... The, the video itself is just not as quality because I'm trying to crank them out, you know, and I'm a one woman show over here, really. That's where what you can do is alternate those text overlays. Okay, yes. Because I can do those text overlays. And, right. And what I do, I, I think I've showed this to you, but when you go into your TikTok, let's say that you did like Tony's text overlay, right? Yeah, right. So like you can take this screenshot. Yes. Right. Have I showed this to you? No, but so you, I'm you do following this you. Screenshot. Hit this little icon right down here, and it just... Oh, co- I didn't know there was a... I didn't now know look, about that icon. Take that, all right. the text, copy. Copy. Go back into TikTok. Do your own little thing. Yep, that's all you do. And then throw it on top. Yep, throw it on top. I love top. it. I love it. And so I'll go through, and I'll like search like right here, money tips. Right. And then I'll go through, and I'll look for text. Yeah. You know, in... Like, Why well, reinvent the right wheel, there. right? Right, and then I'd stop it right there. You know, and I'd screenshot that. Yeah. Right. And pull it. You could do that. Yeah. It's a great way to, you know, kind of just create. But I think that the, the more is not always better. Thank you. You know, some people are like, boom, people- boom, 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 boom. And yeah. you put up a post and then tomorrow you put up a post. Well, sometimes people 
saw that first video, they didn't see, or they didn't see the first video. They see your video today. And then right after that, they got another one and they start like realizing they're like, man, it's just like, you know, so freak quality over quantity, I think is better. Yeah. The algorithm rewards it too. Right. Right. So you're bringing on an agent. Yes. Um, you're growing your team. Yes. You set, did you set goals for the year? Like volume I, or units? or? I didn't. I didn't. I don't. I, I try to. I want to help 30 people. Oh, so that's do, a like, goal. It's a goal. It's just not. Two a, two point, two, a little over two a month. Yeah. Two sides a month. Right. Right. Nice. Yeah. So to get two sides a month, you have to get like how many leads in a month? Probably Ooh. 20 or 30. Yeah, I'd say. Yeah, that's yeah. about what we are. So 20 or 30 leads, and then you're getting most of it from your centers of influence, spheres of influence, right? Yep. It's do you do media. it? So you, you could start doing emails. I know. Uh, it's on my list. Do you I, do any sort of events or invite your clients to anything? No, but I would like to. I mean, I'm open to it. Events are super easy if you keep them simple. Most agents, you know, they want to do these big, exotic, elaborate events, and that's fine, but... What I find is like, so one of my most successful events I ever did yes. was, hey, come to Walden Farms. If you come, I'll give you $20 in Walden bucks. Set up a table and a tent. Right. Had some hot apple cider. Then I got the adult hot, hot apple cider with, with, you know, fireball in it. Oh, cool. Say hi to everybody. I started adding a video of a photographer the last couple of years to take a little photo over there near the, near the hay bales. It cost me like literally like a thousand bucks to have like a hundred people out there right you know i get a sponsor helps me out with half of it yes like i like to do things that are like will allow me to provide benefit to people but doesn't take a whole bunch of planning and effort right you know and i put it on my social and i send out an email and i'm like hey come out to walden farms you know on saturday august you know 31st right we'll give you 20 dollars in walden bucks let the kids see the animals and stuff stop by the tent yeah, that's good. You know, reply to this if you want to attend with how many people are going to be there. Right. Right? Right. I know my company does a lot of exit. They do a lot of events, you know, with the company. And I can, you know, I piggyback on that, you know, free ice skating yeah. or uh, pie giveaways or yeah. stuff like that. So that's good. Like, I don't provide the events or the, you know, goods, but I uh, join in that and that and it, we, they really do appreciate it, you know. My, um, I had a coach one time. He's like, do you know what the best event is that you could ever do? And I was like, what's that? And he goes, the one that you invite everybody, but nobody shows up. I said, why? And he goes, because you don't pay for it. <laughs> He's like, they feel honored that you invited. I mean, he said, think about it. How many times have you been invited to a wedding or something right. that you're like, I'm so honored, but I can't make it. It's just the gift is the invitation. Yeah. And so um, another thing is, like, I know an agent that's, he does once a month, he'll go to a mobile food pantry. Oh. So Second Harvest does mobile food pantries every month around Middle Tennessee. Right. So what he does is he'll say, hey, we're going to be here. We'd love for you to come out and serve. Bring the kids with you. Mm -hmm. And he goes, there's always 10, 20, 30 people that will show up. That's great. So that's my client event. I was like, that's really smart. That is smart. Mm -hmm. I um, love that. I know another person that does dog day at the park. Oh, fun. Yeah, so they'll, like, buy a bunch of dog treats, put them in a little bag, you know, whatever. Yeah. Like, I want to do a Frenchie meetup. Yeah, you have a little Frenchie. I have three of them. Oh, you have three? Yeah. Oh, my god. So I want to do, like, a Frenchie meetup, like, at the park or something. That'd be fun. Because There's a lot of people that have those, aren't there? And then who has Frenchies? Yeah, that's people right. People with money, right? That's right. Yeah. Exactly. What are you excited about this year? Like, what are you really, really, you know, excited about working on? Like, for example, like, I'm going to, my main goal is work, uh, I want to do one YouTube video a week. One a week. That would be good. I've been, I've been looking for your um, hope dealer. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I mean, because you, uh, you were doing them. I, I know it's hard to keep up with everything. The or po podcast is a really difficult thing to do because you've got the audio engineering. Right. And then you got the editing. And what I didn't realize, because we've got like seven or eight episodes ready. Do you? But it takes time for people to do that, and it's expensive. It's like $200 an episode minimum to get people to engineer the audio and do your short clips for promotion and to edit the YouTube clip. Right. But if I had to go back, and what we're doing now is we'll sit down kind of like in this format. We'll record a YouTube long-form video. Okay. And then what we do is extract the audio out of that. Right. Edit the video and then break that video up into small little segments. And, and you if, could do all that from in here because you've got everything. Yeah. That's cool. Have you used Opus One? 
No. So Opus One is AI. You can record a video on your phone, you upload it, and it'll break it up into small clips, put text on the screen and everything. Oh. And, and it's super cheap. Well, that's my style then because I'm frugal. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so if you're like something that you want it to, to, you know, be edited a little bit and that text put on the screen, stuff like that, you literally can do it in like two minutes. Yeah, that would really help out. That'd make my life better. I'm, I'm excited about teaching uh, new agents yeah. and my new agent that I'm mentoring. I'm yeah. excited for that because she, like I said, she's like a spitfire and she's oh, so positive because that, when I went to your rising star event, uh, Lauren had talked about, you know, what is your, your bold statement and oh, what's your, yeah. your, you know, and mine is positivity only. No negativity allowed, yeah, you know? Right. Not that... Which the world needs. Right. Is hungry for. Right. Not that I don't have a bad day or we're not allowed to have a bad moment. I mean, we're human, but I want to surround myself and continue to surround myself with positive people that are more uplifting, you know, instead of the opposite. How in the hell do we have people that come to this country, can hardly speak English, they don't have a dime in their pocket, they're happy, they become productive, they start a business, and then we have people that are raised with a silver spoon right. in Brentwood, Tennessee, with a great family living, Yes, you know, great school, no sort of trauma that they've had to deal with, and they go around bitching and complaining all day long. Like, I think there's a part of it that until you go through storms or you, were, you grew up poor or you know, you were in a traumatic, abusive or something environment. Right. Like, I think some of these people, they just don't know any different. So they think things are way worse than what they really are. Mm -hmm. And I just don't have patience for it. I'm like, okay, great. Like, there was a guy I was coaching yesterday. I literally don't want to coach him anymore. Like, I coached him for six months. God, I, uh, if I post this, I hope he doesn't watch it. But, um, <laughs> I Not told, you. <laughs> you know, he was like, He's like, well, I got back issues, this and that. And it was, you know, honestly, worst year of my life. And, you know, I just don't want to get up, go to work, whatever. And I was like, okay, well, I get that. I, I sympathize. I had back issues. And I'm really sorry you're going through that and this and that. And he just kept on. He kept on. He basically was like, this is the way it's going to be. And life's going to suck. And I was wow. like, this is killing me. Yeah. And I was like, okay, well, listen, you have two choices to just have no hope. Right. And just give up. Yeah. And it's not going to get any better. I said, the other choice, Mario, is you can take small steps to try to improve. Oh, I've done everything. I said, have you? I said, do you exercise? No, not really. I said, do you drink a gallon of water a day? Nope. I said, do you drink other things? Like, co yeah. I said, um, are you going to see a chiropractor? Nope. I was like, so you're, you're expecting it to get better. Right? Right. And I just kind of lost patience. And I was just like, you're not doing anything about it, but expecting different results. And I didn't, I had to walk the line gently because when it comes to health related issues, but I've been in a situation, I was paralyzed for 45 minutes when I was 13 years old. I fell out of a barn. I had back issues for 20 years. And I got so pissed, Amanda, one day I was holding my first daughter and I was holding her and I could barely even hold her for like two or three minutes. And I had to set her down. And I said, you're not even going to be able to hold your grandchildren. This is all. And I got so pissed. I said, I'm going to do whatever it takes to fix this. Right. And I worked on it. It took five years of exercising and eating healthy and going to a car practor and now i'm like 98 percent recovered so maybe i'm a little cold-hearted but i don't have a lot of sympathy for you right because you're doing nothing to try to make it better exactly i don't get that mentality i don't either i don't either because like if we want different results we have to you know take some different actions or make some different choices or how do you stay positive when things aren't going well i try to go back to basics and be thankful for a roof over my head, right. thankful for my health, yep. uh, my relationships, the things that money can't buy. I go back to all, you know, the, to me, the most important things. I almost guilt myself a little bit. Right. I'm like, all right, dude. So, you know, you just got in a car wreck, you know, and banged up your car. Um, it could be worse. You could be paralyzed. You could not even have a car. Yeah. You could be homeless. Yeah. You could have cancer right now. And maybe that's unhealthy, but for me, it's like perspective. Right. 
puts you, you in perspective. You know, Nick that spoke at Rising Stars, the yes. guy, you know, it's happening for you, not to you. Yes. That was life changing in 2023. That was one of the biggest things that I learned in 2023 was my perspective should be this is happening for me, not to me. It brought a lot of clarity to everything in my life. Like, I wouldn't be sitting here with you if some of the bad things that I went through didn't happen. Right. Because I wouldn't have learned from him. My life might have gone a different direction. And Hebrews 11, 1 in the Bible says, you know, have faith in the things that you see and the things you don't see. Just always have faith that shit's happening for a reason. Right. Right. For the greater good. Sometimes we don't understand it, you know, or we don't know his Exa plan, but exactly. we got to trust it. Exactly. I got to keep an eye on time. Yeah. I had a dude earlier today who asked to come visit with me. He's an agent. Okay. He doesn't do a lot of business. Right. And I was in here with one of my loan officers, and I was sitting where you were. And I told my loan officer, I was like, hey, if somebody walks in, let me know. I've got an appointment coming up. Well, we didn't hear the door shut. We didn't hear nothing. I don't know. He didn't see him or didn't know who he was and didn't say anything. But my team said, hey, Sean will be right out. He waited six minutes, and then he texted me. And he said, hey, had to run. I, ex I expect my appointments to be on time. Oh, my goodness. You know, and I, after I got out, I said, man, I'm mortified. I said, I actually literally told my guy, hey, have somebody coming, let me know. I said, we didn't even see you. Right. He goes, well, I waited around 15 minutes. I said, now, wait a minute. I said, you know, he goes, I didn't mean no disrespect. He goes, I just, you know, wanted to respect your time and all of that. I said, well, is that the reason why you told my team that you expect your appointments to be on time? I said, I looked at the door lock because I can look at it. I said, yeah. you opened and closed and you left in six minutes. I said, you don't have six minutes. I feel like I'm very sorry. First right, of all, I said, right. number two, I'm going to be honest with you. I feel disrespected. Yeah. But you could, I want, I'm not valuable enough that you could wait six minutes. Right. 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 And so now I'm like, kind of like got anxiety. Like, you, I'm like, like who's coming? coming right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know. Um, what would you tell a real estate agent that if you went back and had to start your career over, like what are some of the things you're going to tell this new agent that you would have done different? Learn the contract. I mean, forwards and backwards. Sure. I mean, like read it, know it. Because I'll tell you, there are agents that have been in the business for many years that still do not know the contract. Yeah. And how can we really represent our seller, buyer, without they, knowing that? They will call me all the time, and they'll be like, what do I put for FHA non-allowables? I'm like, zero. There are no, those haven't been around for years, right? right? Um, another one, like I got an agent the other day. How much, you know, should this person put down as earnest money? I'm like, that's not a mortgage question, no, right? right? No, no. Um, the <laughs> biggest mistake, the one that costs sellers thousands and thousands of dollars, and this is, you're going to choose somebody that's cheaper. We talk, We started talking about this in the mm -hmm. beginning. You're going to choose somebody to be cheaper. Little do you know, they're going to cost you way more than that. This is the number one thing I see, is that sellers will go, um, the, these agents will go, and they will write in a contract, closing costs, whatever, special steps, whatever. Then they'll get the title. Who's responsible for title cost? And a good agent will write seller in there. Yeah. Well, a lot of these listing agents don't even read it. And then what happens is the CD goes out and they're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Like, what? I'm like, that's the title insurance. Your seller agreed to pay it. Mm -hmm. You know, well, that's $2,400. I'm like, I don't read contracts. I go by what you give me. The buyer's agent's a good agent. They wrote seller in there and you accepted it. Yes. That's the number one thing I see that people don't read and watch because the agents don't pick up on it. Yep. And that's your largest charge on a mortgage for us. Right. It's always title insurance with the title attorney, the closing. Right. You know? I, yeah. I make sure to look at all the special box, you know, all the special boxes that I'm like, well, it could be snuck in here too. You know, uh, it should be here, but they could sneak it here. So like, I try to be very cautious of that too, because um, I want to know what we're, what the offer is. And I want to be able to explain the offer you know, really well too, but getting a, um, I would put in there, my advice would be for any agents that listen to this is when you get, when you put seller paid closing costs, put seller agrees to pay up to $3,000 exactly. in closing cost prepaids and title expenses. Okay. Because if you put like that, that in there, yes. but then later you pick seller, you're like, we said 3000 It doesn't matter if we put that's in the 3000 Right. And that contract law would stick. Yes. So, um, what about new builds, new construction? 
like Murfreesboro, one thing I was realizing when I was over there the other day is, God, they keep on letting like the big track builders, Lennar and all these people. And I hate that because they block me out on the mortgages because they all own their own mortgage companies. Right. And you got to, well, basically you're using in-house if you're dealing with them. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, I've got, I had an agent call me actually last night that is doing open house. Okay. Well, she's agent on duty. Yep. Two to four on Sundays, and it's it's in Bell Buckle, but it's right on the Murfreesboro line. But you know, Bell Buckle yeah, yeah. does pretty well, so I think because they could have went either way with it from the way the tax records were and everything, so they went Bell Buckle. And low um, taxes. Yes, for ta- I think tax reasons and probably USDA states, eligible too. Uh, yep, I would say I don't know for sure, but I would say out there. So I'm going to be helping her do that on Sundays, like the days that she can't do it. She said, Amanda, can you help me? Because I, I committed to this, but I really don't have every Sunday from two to four, you yeah. know. And so I'm, I'm going to do that to help. And I'm also going to train my new Michelle. Yep. So my mentor's name is Michelle. And my mentee's name is Michelle. Oh, wow. So I'm like, I'm going to have to come up with a new name for one of you. <laughs> one time we had four Matts working oh, here. God. So it was Matt, Matthew, Matty B. They all had See? names, right? Yes, you got to come up with a little name. <laughs> I asked you a second ago, like going back, like your, your new agent. Is your new agent uh, married, got kids? She's like, single, but she has two kids. Okay. So she's, she's motivated very, to work. Very. So I would, if I was leading that agent or I was saying, hey, something I would do. Number one, I would say three out of four weekends, you know, maybe not both Saturday, Sunday, but three out of four weekends on one day on the weekend, you need to go and host an open house. Right, right. So I have an agent that moved here from California. He was highway patrol out there. He came here, got his license. He goes and he does one open house every weekend. He calls builders and he's like, hey, can I host one of your opens? And every weekend he ends up doing one. Picks up buyers off it. He's closing three deals a month on average right now. He'll close 30 to 40 deals this year. That's awesome. The second thing he does is he takes his... Pr- what did Michelle do before coming into real estate? She works with um, elderly people, helping them get care. She don't do the care, but she helps them get set up with that. Oh, that's what my mom does. Okay. Um. So I'm a big fan of using our previous experience to help us in our current experience. Right. So like... Kyle, being Highway Patrol, he brings like a lunch tray down to the Murfreesboro Police Department once a month, every month, just drops it off, says, here you go, this is a gift from me. He started getting referrals out of it. Mm-hmm. Maybe one thing she needs to do is go back to those people she used to work with. Yes. Say, I just want to drop off, you know, a dessert tray, drop off a box of donuts or whatever it is, yes. right? Yes. Every single time, just put her little business card on there. Consistency. Like I would do it like very consistent, like clockwork. Right. But the open house thing for sure. Yep. And then the third thing I would say is you are required to wear your name tag, you know, as much as possible. Yes. Like you have yours on. Yes. I would pick up more business off just having my name tag. Hey, you know, oh, I see your realtor like check out and stuff. They'd be mm-hmm. like, can I ask you a question? Absolutely. You can. Right. And I would go places, I would talk to people, and they'd be like, can I ask you a question? Next thing you know, a couple of weeks later, they call me and they need a mortgage loan. Right. That's what I would, those are the three things I would recommend That's people a good, do. That's good, good recommendation. And probably number four, like, hey, put out content. Yes. Like all, all five of these guys that work here, like they're required to put out content every week. Like if you're going to work here, this is what you need to do. This is what we believe in. Yeah. Because I said, I don't want you out on the streets having to try to meet dozens of people when you can meet thousands of people. I know. Right? Yeah. It's a great culture you're building because, I mean, it is really the the present and the future. And if we don't get on board, we get left behind. That's why I'm like, I can't get left behind. But it's been a struggle to like, come on, you know, and then how much to share, you know. Do you without, have time scheduled in your calendar when you do your content or you do it kind of randomly? I do. Or? I do. I have my assistant comes over on Wednesday mornings okay. from 8 to 10. Nice. And we do our, so I try to do all my videos in the two hours, which is really hard yeah. um, for the week. Um, so I don't have like a year, which would but, be great. I would love to get to that point where I could just be like, okay, here's my library. I can just, I need an educational today or, you know. I started taking all my old videos that were on my iPhone. Right. And I opened up a Google Doc folder. I labeled it videos. And then I went ahead and I said, what do you want to talk about, Sean? Okay, three things. I want money and mindset and leadership. I want realtor, client, 
you know, realtor uh, client, you know, mortgage. And then the third thing I want to do is, you know, I want like around sales, money, finance tips, right? Right. So then I took every video, or I had my assistant do it, but I had her go through every video and drop it in the folder that was associated. So now I have them all categorized. And now on my content calendar, I could say, okay, today is consumer facing. So I go in the consumer folder and I pick something and that's how I do it now. Yeah. Because so many of us put together great videos. But then we only use it once. I know. Which is crazy. Yeah. And that's how Gary Vee became so popular. He took every video and used it on average seven different ways. Changed it somewhat. Changed it away. Short form, long form, you know, carousel, like story. Like I'll take my videos that I record sometimes as a reel and I'll just drop them in my story. Be like, I, I need to play that one again. Yeah. And the thing is, is go back to the ones that were hits. Right. You reuse them again. Reuse them. Yeah. yeah. People don't remember that stuff. Well, I wrote a book. I wrote a little book. Did you? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I out. saw that. Yeah. So Is it going to be on a, Amazon? Amazon. It's on Amazon. I'd like to get a copy of it. It's a little short story. Well, What's it about? It's about uh, struggling as a new realtor and thinking when you get into this industry, it's going to be like what we see on TV, and it's just so wonderful and easy. And, and I just explain that it's really not, but it can be, you know. There's ways. Yep. So I try to talk about the content creating and how to market and brand yourself so people do spot you or call you or say, hey, I want to do a Zoom. You know, you find that connection with people. And Nice. Yeah. So, so when's it going to be available? It's going to be out the 31st of this nice. month, January. Yep. Very nice. Yeah. I can't wait to get a copy of it. Thank you. I've got to get going to my next okay. appointment here, but awesome. I'll get this re uh, broke up. Awesome. I'll Thank put, you. I'll put the raw video on a, a folder for you. Yes. That way, if you Man. want to try to look at it, break it up. Take you a little snippets out of it. Just don't post some of the stuff. I hear you. I'll be careful. Some of my conversation. Okay. I appreciate it. I don't it. really care. Whatever I say, usually I say it. Me too, you man. Know. Like, everybody, I'm kind of, what you see is what you get, kind of. That's right. You know, I find a lot of people just passively really really just hate confrontation one thing 